Okay. Uh, last point of last point that I want to talk about is David Koch. He died. He's dead. One of the Koch brothers has passed away. Uh, he was. Uh, if you don't know who David Koch is, David Koch is basically. Uh, part of Coke Industries. I think he was uh, one of the largest stakeholders in, uh, in Coke Industries. Him and his brother Charles owned 80% of it. And uh, they were oil tycoons, essentially, and political influencers, right? And you like, you never... Th- Look, anybody that ends up becoming a tycoon of something, like, there's very little good that tycoons do. You know? Like, that, that is just not a positive title to have. It's like emperor or dictator tycoon it's kind of it's, it kind of falls into the same kind of category you know like tycoon like nobody nobody comes out and looks at somebody like elon musk and it's just like yeah that dude is an innovative tech tycoon it's like no that guy is probably an alien like this you know like no one calls no one calls anybody that is rich and legitimately gives a shit about human progress and helping out all of us and making sure that there's more equality in the world uh, nobody calls that person a tycoon. You call somebody a tycoon when they are, like, actively trying to fuck over poor people. <laughs> and David Koch has done that. We'll talk about that in a second. And he's also a political influencer, which is, like, way, way worse than an Instagram influencer. Uh, they have way more money and, uh, and, and waste way more time. Um, so, uh... I want to be honest about his legacy. That's what I want. I think it's important to be honest about people's legacies. It's important to um, know what these people are truly about. Uh, and a lot of people came out and was like, well, he was a philanthropist. You know, he was he was a libertarian. He's socially liberal, socially liberal. Uh, a lot of people came out and, and made that claim. So, you know, as I was digging around about this guy, to be like, okay, what is this philanthropy really about? So the positive aspect of, of his philanthropy was that he helped a bunch of cancer research. He funded a whole bunch of cancer research uh, and uh, put a lot of money into that. But he did it after he got prostate cancer and couldn't like actually actively serve on the board of his company. That's when he started putting his money into that. So it wasn't like he wanted to decrease cancer. Like He did it because he had cancer and he needed that shit fixed like now. You know, like that's what needed to happen. So he put his money behind it. I don't think he did it altruistically. And then socially liberal, yeah, sure. They, uh, I think they were like pro LGBT or, or some shit. But they blackmailed their other brother. Fred Cope was blackmailed to be like, hey, you don't have a social life and you don't hang around a lot of girls. So we think you're gay and we're going to expose that shit. Like, they did that to get his stake in their dad's company. You don't do that if you're... Like, what a, what a shitty thing to do. To your own family member? They were pro-Citizens United. Uh, and I think they were pro-Citizens United, which is a, which basically let corporations spend unlimited money on, on political campaigns. Uh, it's a total dog shit bill that is... That ba- the, the reason why they were pro-Citizens United is because it opened them up to do what they ended up doing um, uh, in the la- at least specifically in the last decade uh, and it gave them a lot more influence and a lot more power over politics and to uh, and to play their games right and, and they've always kind of been shadow puppeteers they never came out specifically to be like yes we have been influencing the politics of Ted Cruz and their Marco Rubio and the Jeb Bush and the Mike Pence and the Mike Pompeo, and the Scott Walker, like uh, you know, they're not gonna come out and just fucking say that shit. Um, and the, and their whole big thing for supporting it was the fact that they're pro uh, free market. They think the free market will dictate it, so they are like, well, let us participate in the free market and basically put flood it with so much money that we manipulate it and con- and, and are in control of the free market. They, they, they needed that kind of influence about it. Uh, this is the big one. They, they supported Jair Bolsonaro. They funded Jair, Jair Bolsonaro. Like, they gave this dude a bunch of fucking money to win in Brazil. And because of his 
backwards climate denial and uh, anti-indigenous belief systems. Like, Brazil is burning more rainforest because he's emboldened the ranchers, he's emboldened um, the, the farmers that are there to burn more of the rainforest so that they can expand their operations of lumber, their expansion of, of ranching and all that kind of shit. And, and they don't believe that this is going to affect the climate in any way because to them, they're like, oh, global warming, climate change, none of that stuff should be dictated by the government. No, the government shouldn't be talking about that shit. That's, uh, you got to let scientists figure that stuff out. But the government, uh, you can't do it. But give the fossil fuel industry more money. You need to give coke industries, like, more money, though. Like, you got to deregulate them and give us a lot more freedom in exploiting and taking over more private properties and, and fracking a, a shit ton of, uh, of things. Like, you need to let us do that. But don't, I mean, don't say, don't get involved in climate change. That's a very dangerous, th that's a huge, a huge thing that they did. And that it's a super dangerous thing to do. Like, like to put that kind of propaganda out there. Right? And, and we go back to the philanthropy aspect of it. Because people, like, kind of go, yeah, yeah, I guess they were anti-climate anti change. But, but, I mean, they were philanthropic. They, like, did a bunch of nice things for a bunch of people. Yeah, but they didn't, I mean, they did it for their own fucking selfish needs. They actually came out and said it, too. Like, there, uh, there's, there's a New Yorker article uh, that's, uh, that is quoting David Koch that says, If we're going to give lots of money, we're going to be darn sure that it goes along with our intent. Basically saying, money is speech, guys. We're gonna give these philanthropic organization, uh, 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 these philanthropic donations to these organizations, but we're gonna fucking let them know that they better they better spew some shit that that we believe in, and make their make the people that follow their organizations also believe in that shit that we spew. Like they might have given to a bunch of cancer uh, 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 research cancer research and, and cancer, uh, you know, charities and stuff, but it, but they were like, don't fucking let people know there's a cure. Don't let people know, don't make, also don't make it affordable because we don't believe in the ACA or, or any sort of socialized medication because we believe in the free market. The free market decides who gets to live or die and, and David Koch needs to live through prostate cancer but don't make it available to anybody else. If anybody else wants that cure, they should be able to pay for it. That's not philanthropic. If, if you were philanthropic, then you would have fucking spent money to give back to the communities you fucked over and probably gave cancer to in those poor communities. That would be far more philanthropic. They were anti-union, they were anti-labor rights. Right, like there's there's a uh, there was a story that uh, there's like a, a hierarchy. Uh, I think I'm gonna get to that in just a little bit. But there's like a hierarchy in their in their corporate structure. Uh, let's see, they quiet they're they're quietly controlling laws. That's what they're doing. They're they're quietly controlling the levers uh, of what makes society work. They own a bunch of shit, like the, the Dixie cups, paper towels. Uh, not just oil and gas, but like if, if you're controlling oil and gas, you're also controlling plastic bottles with, with water. Um, they're in a bunch of shit. Uh, they, they make certain chemicals that go into basically all of the stuff. Like I'm driving a car, so I mean it's, it sucks because I, it's, that's sort of the unfortunate hypocrisy of where, what I have to do. Um, I wish, but this is part of the thing that they believe in, right? I wish that I, I could afford a solar charged car but I can't um, and that's what the market dictates the market dictates that solar cars through the regulations put on solar uh, has to be more expensive and poor people can't afford that shit and they have to go to work and they need cars and we're forced into it so, so the free market essentially takes choice away from poor people and that's what the Cokes believed in and one of them still does uh, essentially, they want a full privatization of the American government. They, they want to limit the control of it. They want a full privatization of, of the American government and the resources that the American government has. That's what they, that's what they really, really want. 
uh, and propaganda is necessary for manipulation of free of the free market. They need to convince you that this is what the market wants when when they're just manipulating it. You know, they're they're making sure that any sort of progressive um, progressive fuels or alternative fuels or any of that sort of stuff, even though it's proven that it's far more beneficial and far more powerful than what we're using now, that they will they will make sure that there are more harsh regulations put on it in order to make sure that they make more money with uh, with their oil, gas, and fossil fuels. The, the free market is is not free. It's act, it's actually per, very expensive to participate in the free market in order to in order to participate in an actual free market. So the other big thing is Americans for Prosperity. Um, it is a they, they are I, I can very comfortably say that the American for Prosperity, the people that are part of the Americans for Prosperity, are foot soldiers for the Tea Party libertarian activism and, and it's for the control. That's all it is. Like they are they are trying to convince other people that what they're doing is the right thing and uh, yeah and, and they're they're foot soldiers for, for, for that for that belief system. That's what they they truly truly really really are. And um, they they want they've essentially they've also corporatized activism because they'll provide these people with like box lunches and uh, like glossy protest signs, um, at, you know, like Blue Jean Friday. If you protest this bill, this Green New Deal, Blue Jean Friday, guys, like that sort of shit. They've kind of they've, that's what they did. They also had uh, ranking systems for their employees, right? This is part of their anti-union, anti-labor law stuff. Um, they have a ranking system for their employees. It sucks. Uh, because they're 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 all uh, basically then pit to compete against each other rather than uh, have any solidarity with each other. So there, there's probably a lot of backstabbing, you know, and that and that's not even, that's not good for productivity. If you're more worried about like trying to outdo your fucking, uh, you know, like you're out outdoing your fucking cubicle mate or whatever the fuck, like you're you're out there cooking up schemes trying to like outdo them rather than like actually doing more productive shit. And they have a color system, like it's a terror chart. Yeah, it's it's the terror alert of corporatism, is what that is. David Koch's legacy is not a legacy of philanthropy. That's what. And look, I'm sure there are people that are very sad about David Koch's life or death. I'm sure his brother, maybe I don't know. You know, his brother also kind of seems like a skis bag. Maybe his brother is just like finally now the full eighty percent of the company belongs to me. Yeah, I, like I don't, I don't know. I also find it very interesting that the cause of death has not been released. The cause of death uh, was was I, I, nobody knows what the cause of death is. So, to me, um, that is very interesting. And I think that has to do with Jeffrey Epstein because everybody kind of had a, the, the whole thing of like, yeah, somebody killed that dude. And uh, they don't want any of those kind of theories to pop up and go around, which I think gives the Jeffrey Epstein thing a lot more a lot more power and weight. So uh, I think his legacy, David Koch's legacy, is profitability, control, and greed. That's what his legacy is. And it's, and it's pretty evident in the things that he said, in the way that he's operated, and the and the way that he has gone about doing doing things. Um, and that's unfortunate. You know, I try to find the silver lining, and, and I try to find the good in everybody, but I don't know if David Koch really had much good uh, in him. I, I think a lot of what he did was, was to vie for control and, you know, try to lead the corporate states of America. You know, like instead of instead of it being a voice for the people, he was kind of trying to be like, what corporation is going to control America? That's where we're headed with with if what David Koch and Charles Koch want to do. They'll, it's more about what corporations control America. That's what our election systems will run into. Is is it going to be Exxon, Coke Industries, Taco Bell? Is that who's going to control the fucking country? And every few, every like decade or so, we end up. Re, you know, running through the cycle of it. That's what that's 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 what David Koch wants his legacy to be. Hey everyone, 
Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in my life. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY independent socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.